welcome to Kappa Java week 5 function. So a function is a block of code that runs only when it is called. Um, and data known as parameters can be passed into a function. Functions can return data. And a type of function that is unique to an object type is called a method. And so there are also built-in functions. And these are functions that are already available in Python, meaning that there is no need to define them. And so some examples of this is typecasting, like um, um, casting from a integer to a float or from a string to an integer, math functions like square root and power, and random functions like random. And so there are also string methods. And so some examples of string method is, is alpha, which returns true if s contains only letters, false otherwise, is digit, which returns true if s contains only digits and false otherwise, split, which returns a list of words in s with um, sub as the separator, and if sub is not indicated that any white space string is the separator, starts which, which re returns true if the string starts with sub and false otherwise, and find which returns the index of the first and third of the substring, and negative one if the su um, substring is not found. And start and end indicate the range within the string which the substring is searched for. Uh, okay, so before that, we can do an example of this. So let's set a equal to abc, b equal to one, two, three, C equal to BC, one, two, three. And so we can test is alpha. On all of them. And we see that A is true while B and C are false because A contains only letters while B and C both contain numbers. <laughs> and so we can also test is digit. And we see that B is true while A and C are false because A and C contain letters while B only contains numbers. And so is alpha and is digit are really useful for like making sure that the user only inputs what you want. So like for example, if you want the input to in put um, the user to input a word, then using is alpha can check if it's um, only letters. And if you want the user to input a number, then using is digit can allow you to check if um, it's only numbers. And is digit is also useful when you want to convert from a um, string to a digit um, to an integer, and I can check it to make sure that that string is actually an integer. And so we can also try find. So we see that for A and C, A is found as the first um, at index zero, which is corresponds to the first letter, and B returns negative one because A is not in the string of B. And so we can also um, try start with. And we see that A and C return true while B returns false because A and C do start with A while B does not start with A. And this can also, doesn't have to be a single letter, this can also be like a substring with multiple letters. And it still works. And we can also do find, um, not find, um, split. And so split will. Um, split the substring into a list. 
So when we try on A with the um, separator being B, we get a list with A and C, and we'll talk more about lists later. But um, B is not included in this list because it is being used as a separator. And so like, if we don't indicate the separator, like for example, if we create this new variable um, D and we do D dot split, and we don't put anything inside the parentheses, then it will just split at the white space. As you can see here, hi by is being split at the space. And so now we'll talk about creating and calling functions. So you, um, you can create your own functions by using def keyword, which indicates that a function is being created, and then um, the function name, um, parentheses, and a colon. And then under that um, and in indented, you put the code that you want to be run in the function. And to call the function, you just have to call the function name. So for example, def function. Function. And you can call this function as many times as you want. So here we call it twice, so it performs the function twice and prints out hi twice. And so there are functions also can have arguments, and these are information that are passed into functions. And so there is no limit to the number of arguments in a function. There are also parameters which are very similar to arguments, and the difference is that the parameter is the variable in the function definition, while the argument is the value being passed into the function when it's called. And the number of arguments um, when the function is called must be the same as the number of parameters when the function is defined. So for example, if I add parameter word and letter, and I do i and a, then the function is called properly and it prints out high because that's what's defined in the function. But if I only have like one argument, then it gives me an error because um, it, the number of arguments doesn't match the number of parameters. And one way we can get around this is by using arbitrary arguments. So the asterisk symbol for the parameter name in the function definition denotes ar the argument, arbitrary argument, and this is used when the number of arguments passed into the function is unknown, and so the function will receive a tuple of arguments. So for example, if I do letters and I do a, b, and I run this, then the function will run. And even if I get rid of um, a argument, the function will still run properly. And to reference um, the arguments being inputted, we use its index. So we would do letter, letter, and then if we want to reference the first argument, we would do zero, because it starts at zero, and so it'll just print out A. And so there are also keyword arguments, and to do these, you set a key equal to a value, and this allows you to specify which parameter each argument corresponds to. So this is an example, and we can just do word and letter. So, if we want to print out word, print letter. And so, all we have to do is when we call the function, we set the function equal to um, the parameter, the argument equal to the parameter. So, you can see A corresponds with word and B to letter. And we can flip this and it still works.
and now B is word in A's letter. So normally the the number of the argument would correspond to the number of parameter, but this with this we can specify um, what the argument, which parameter the argument corresponds with. And there are also arbitrary keyword functions. So to do this, we add two asterisks before the parameter name in the function definition, and this is used when you don't know how many keyword arguments are going to be passed into a function. So for example, I can make a function um, letter, um, um, keyword argument letter, and so five to first equals a, second equals b, plus equals b. So I can reference this by putting in quotes the name of the keyword and it brackets. So when I print this, it prints out a, and if I change this to last, it'll print out C. So there are also default parameter values. So this sets a default value for a parameter. And so this value would be used when there are no arguments passed on the function call. And this does not affect um, the parameter if an argument is passed. So for example, if I do letter equals C. Um, I this. So when I call the function with a and with nothing, the function with a will print out a like normal, while the function with um, nothing will print out C since we defined here the default parameter as equaling C. And so we can also return um, values, um, have the function return values using re the return keyword. Um, and so we just um, add return. So for example, instead of printing it out here, I want to return it so I can use it later. Um, and then I can set this equal to a variable. And then print out the variable. So you can see here, um, when we print x, it um, x the value returned, which is letter, is um, stored into x, and then we print that out. And the same for y. And so this is useful if you have like really complicated code and a lot of functions, because um, you can return a value and use it elsewhere, and you don't have to like. Um, do everything in that one function. And so we also have a project that um, you can do so to practice functions and string methods. So for this project, we're making a password generator. So we want to have the user input um, required specifications by asking about um, the minimum length, the numbers, um, having numbers and special characters. So we want to ask the user to input their current password and check if it meets the requirements di by defining functions. And if it's um, the their current password does not meet the requirements, then we want to, um, if it does meet the requirements, we want to print valid password. And if it does not, we want to use random functions to create and print an adequate password. And so I'll leave this to you guys, and this will help you practice. Um, so that's it. Thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.